Australia has never done too well in the Winter Olympic Games. This is mostly due to Australia's lack of winter the main prerequisite needed to practice for the, you know, Winter Olympics. But that has never stopped them, and today I have a truly incredible story of how they won their first ever gold medal at the Winter Olympics, and it's one you'll find hard to believe. Salt Lake City, 2002, a nervous Stephen Bradbury lined up for the quarterfinal, and at the ripe age of 30, he was much older than all the other people he was competing against. Competing with him, Apollo Anto Ohano, American superstar and crowd favorite tipped to win the gold medal, and Mark Gannon of Canada, the current world speed skating champion. Out of the four, only two could go to the next round. And after the match, the results were in. Bradbury third place. As most expected, it was clear that he was going home. Until the judges suddenly declared Gannon disqualified from the race due to a technicality. And incredibly enough, Stephen was going into the semi-finals. In the semi-finals, it was noted that every single opponent he was up against had qualifying times much, much quicker than Bradbury. So it was an assumption that he would be going home after this round. His opponents had very impressive resumes too, with Kim Dong Sun of South Korea, four-time world speed skating champion, Li Jian of China, a holder of five Olympic medals in speed skating already, and Matthew Turco, Canadian. If you've ever watched a game of ice hockey, you'll know what I mean. During my research, I found that it was reported that even his coach told him to hang back from the pack, knowing he'd never be able to keep up with them. How's that for instilling confidence? And not long before arriving to Salt Lake City, he survived a near fatal accident on the ice where he broke his neck. Nevertheless, here he was, and Steven knew that sport isn't all about winning, so he lined up already knowing every single race from the track was faster and younger than he was. The gunshot sounded, and the next thing you know, Steven managed to qualify yet again, and he was going on to the finals. Only this time, he actually finished first. As it turns out, following his coach's words, as motivating and as helpful as they were, actually won him first place. In classic hair and tortoise fashion, every single person on the track crashed, and it simply left Mr. Bradbury with nothing else left to do but finish the race in an orderly fashion. All bets were off. This man wasn't even supposed to make it past the first qualifier, and yet here he was about to face off against the world's elite at the Olympic Games final. In an unusual turn of events, he was racing against four other people instead of the normal three. Some that would later turn out to be detrimental. With him were Victor An, a man who went on to win the world championship six times, Li Jian, five-time Olympic gold medal winner, Apollo Ohano, arguably the single most decorated Winter Olympian of all time, and Matthew Turco, still Canadian. They say there's no luck in sports, and it was safe to assume this man's hot streak was about to come to an abrupt end. And would you believe it? He won. He was coming last by a whole lap. The guy in front was coming out of the very last corner of the race before the finish line and crashed, bringing down everyone besides Mr. Bradbury. And he was actually so far behind everyone else, he missed the huge crash entirely. And our hero coasted over the finish line and into sporting history as a modern folk hero, earning Australia's first and only gold medal at the Winter Olympics. No one could believe it. This man actually received the highest honor in sporting history by simply being the only person not to fall over while skating around the ice. He immediately retired from speed skating, and pulling a Bradbury became another phrase in the Australian vocabulary. 18 years later, and he's now a motivational speaker who has toured the world teaching others about his last man standing mantra. What a guy. Hey guys, thanks for watching our first video. As you can tell, there's, yeah, it's literally the first video on our channel. For people that do know, the very few of you that do know, I have been doing YouTube for a while, but I figured I might as well start up another channel just because I enjoy doing these story time documentary type things. I don't think I really need to tell you this, but feedback is really, really appreciated, whether it's good or bad or just anything. As always, if you enjoyed this, be sure to subscribe. But if not, it's cool. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you come back to watch more of our content in the future. Bye.